Hi, it's Hoshi with TaiwaneseAmerican.org. I'm actually at the Taiwanese American Foundation Summer Conference in North Manchester, Indiana. And I actually have a special guest with me today. It's Eric Chang. He's actually Taiwanese American as well. He grew up in the States. Um, but he does most of his work now in Taiwan. I just wanted to introduce him to you and let's hear a little bit about his story and why he does what he does. My name is Eric. I'm a second generation Taiwanese American. I've been living in Taiwan now for about nine years. But it pretty much all started here at TAF back in 1989. Really what I do in my spare time now, I've been making short YouTube clips where I actually talk about Taiwanese media, which happens to be really bad in my opinion. Um, here in the States, a lot of people watch Fox News. Fox News is, well, it's not news, but it's pretty entertaining, I'd say. Um, when you go back to Taiwan, I actually found out that pretty much all media in Taiwan is like Fox News. And so what I try to do lately is just, you know, through humor, try to introduce uh, some of the news hypocrisy, some of the ridiculous things that politicians say, and I try to do it with a funny twist. Um, I have to say my inspiration is here when you watch The Daily Show, when you watch The Colbert Report, they're really good at talking about the news in a way that you know people can you know really relate to. Taiwanese, especially as Taiwanese Americans, you have to speak out. At some point you're going to have to stand out, at some point you're going to have to have the courage to stand out and speak out. Why? Because people living in Taiwan don't have the opportunities you do. They don't have the open access to information, which is totally what is needed. You guys have it so good out here, right? And you, gotta, you have to utilize it. You have to take that time and really learn about your history. You have to, to want to know about it, okay? And if you don't know that much, it's all right. Just think it's all right because you have time to learn. I guess this all kind of started for me, actually, when um, Zhang Mingqin, he's actually an ex-ARATS uh, spokesman. And ARATS is what... Um, the body in Taiwan, that actually, body in China, sorry, that actually deals with Taiwan affairs. And he came to speak in Tainan about two years ago. And the week before he came, I actually had no idea who he was. The only reason I went to protest was because one of my best friends, his girlfriend actually really hated this guy. She showed me some clips on YouTube about the things he actually used to say about Taiwan. And after watching five minutes, I knew that, you know, I had to go do something. Um, and at that time, all I really knew how to do was, you know, use my loud mouth. So I basically went, uh, protested, and when you write banners, they don't come with spell check. And I've actually grown up with spell check, so unfortunately living in Taiwan so long, uh, I spelled independent incorrectly. Really embarrassing being that when I first went back to Taiwan, I was actually an English teacher. So <laughs> um, my English isn't that good, my Taiwanese is kind of broken, but through that, um, it kind of all changed for me, and I started uh, realizing that you know I actually had something to offer. Well, I don't know if I really have anything to offer, but this is what I like to do in my spare time. At this young of an age, you may not know where you're going to be in the future. You may not know what you're going to be doing 10 years from now, 5 years from now. But I guarantee you, this time that you have at TAF, the people that you meet here at TAF, the connections you make, the friendships that you make, are really going to be lasting. They're really going to be lasting. Some of my friends now, I can say, I've known for over 20 years. I've known for over 20 years, longer than you guys have been alive. Like, longer than you guys have been alive. And all these people now, all of my friends are all doing the greatest things in different arenas. Really doing great things, but we're so different from each other. Right? If I never came to TAF, I never would have met these people. I never would have met these other Taiwanese Americans that are exactly like me, yet totally different from me. Right? And really take this time. Right? I mean, TAF is only a week, but it has impacted my entire life. Okay? It's only a week, but yet you can make such a big impact on other people, on other Taiwanese Americans, on other Taiwanese. As a Taiwanese American, the good thing is that you learn to speak out. And the problem now in Taiwan is people maybe are a little bit hesitant to speak out sometimes. And they're really hesitant to talk about politics because they think it's controversial. But I actually think watching the news is really funny, actually. And there's really... A lot you can learn from watching Taiwanese media, but the thing is, we need to change it. We need to make it better. So what I try to do is just make short clips. I think yesterday I was talking to Karen, and she was uh, she mentioned something about how you know how do we why should we call ourselves Taiwanese? You know what, what's important about Taiwan? And Karen said uh, yesterday you said it was about the island, right? Like the island of Taiwan, because because it wasn't it's not just about being born in Taiwan, right? We have people now that are mixed. We have people that are um, people say washing, right? And that means. Uh, People that were born in China that came over in 1949 uh, after the Chinese Civil War, right? We call those Washing, right? Um, out of province, that's technically what it means. Um, a lot of those people, a lot of my friends are Washing, and they're so Taiwanese, okay? So, you know, when, when, you, when you call yourself Taiwanese today, the definition is different. It's much more inclusive. It's much more inclusive, okay? 
But Karen yesterday said something that uh, she said, um, it's this, uh, this island of Taiwan, it's this island of Taiwan that no matter where we are, binds us together, that holds us together. Okay? And that actually got me thinking last night when I was, before I went to bed. And for me, I actually thought, actually it's not the island itself. It's the people. <laughs> it's all of us. It's the, it's the people that live on Taiwan. It's the Taiwanese diaspora. It's the Taiwanese that live overseas, everywhere. That's what is Taiwanese. That's what holds us together. It's not, it's not just some island. If today the island of Taiwan wasn't there, Taiwanese people, we would still be here. Hopefully one, one, of you day, one of these days you guys will actually be able to catch my clips. Uh, they're really ghetto right now because I actually just do it in front of my house and you know there's vines, it's kind of falling apart. I actually get criticized for that a lot. Um, hopefully in the future I can actually up my production value a little bit. But uh, you know, hopefully I can get to somewhere where like TaiwaneseAmerican.org is now. You guys do a lot of really great stuff, especially for the Taiwanese American community. And actually I think people in Taiwan have a lot to learn from the Taiwanese American community here in the U.S. So hopefully you guys will be able to uh, give back to Taiwan and actually let the rest of the world know that Taiwan is a really great place, even though we have some problems right now. The first week, first two weeks of me going back to Taiwan, everything just started to click and make sense. My God, that's why my parents do this. That's why my parents say the things that they do. Man, my parents were this... I mean, you got to think about this. All of our parents, they came at a time when they were the I mean, top of their class. They were at the top of their class. They had everything going for them. I mean, let's not talk about martial law. Let's not talk about all that other stuff. But in their, in their respective arenas, these were the top of the top. And what did they do? They sacrificed everything. They sacrificed everything to come over to the States, right? And when you come over to the States and you can't speak English, are Americans really nice to you? No. No. But if you guys ever have a chance to go to Taiwan, and I really hope you guys have a chance to go to Taiwan, if you go to Taiwan, you can't speak any Taiwanese, you can't speak any Aboriginal languages, you can't speak Hakka, you can't speak any of the language. Taiwanese people will bend over backwards to communicate with you. Taiwanese people will bend over backwards to get you to where you need to go. That, I thought, was so amazing for me going to Taiwan. You know, I clearly stuck out when I went there, yet I've never felt more at home. Really, and, and that's so hard to describe. And just think about it, our parents left that. Our parents left that to come here to really struggle. I mean. It was so hard for them, and they sacrificed so much, yet, and they continue to live here. They can, why? So we can have opportunities to grow in total open environment. And what I really want to do is, I really want to encourage the younger generation, the younger Taiwanese Americans, to really get involved, really find out what's going on in Taiwan, because right now, Taiwan needs our help. The Taiwanese diaspora all over the world is really great, and they can really bring Taiwan together. And here at TAP is a really great place for Taiwanese Americans to really grow, learn about themselves, learn about their strengths and weaknesses, and to see where they can really affect Taiwan and Taiwanese Americans in a good way. Being Taiwanese is different for everybody. Okay? The reason I call myself Taiwanese is probably definitely different from maybe what Hoji says, from what Bob thinks, from what Karen thinks, and that's okay. There's not one definition of being Taiwanese. Right? I think one of the funniest things, I was in Taiwan one time, and I forget what happened, but I was over the internet, and, and I, was, I was having a conversation with somebody, and I said, I said something like, Taiwan's a country, and somebody said, technically, Taiwan's not a country. And this was a Taiwanese person that had been living in the States for a while, I think like, uh, somebody a little bit older. And you know what this person sent me? He sent me a link of the U.S. State Department's, the U.S. State Department's definition of what Taiwanese was, and what like, Taiwan was, and what a country was. And I thought that was really interesting. You're a Taiwanese person. You have to look to the United States definition of what Taiwanese is to notice that we're actually not a country. Or what. It was just really funny. Right? When I call myself Taiwanese, I don't look in a book to see if I'm Taiwanese or not. Right? But this is what this guy was telling me to do. And I just thought it was really strange. Right? I thought it was really funny. Right? If you want to call yourself Taiwanese today, that's, all it, that's, that's the most important thing. But if you are going to do that, there is something that you have to do. You do have to reach out to your parents. You have, do have to reach out to you know, our roots and find out where we're from so that we can, you know, continue on in the future. So that's it from TaiwaneseBreak.org. Don't forget to check us out on the web and also check out Eric's site. Yeah, my site is just uh, get on YouTube and just type in Abiyang, A-H-B-Y-I-N-G, and you can see some more of my videos.